Hey guys, welcome to Pajama Let's Play. I'm Michelle, host of Pajama Let's Play, where we talk all things Kingdom Hearts. Today, I'm going to dive deeper into the Norse god Lothar and why I agree he is likely the somebody for Luke's sword. But before we get into all that, make sure to like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell. You can also follow me on Twitch, check out my Patreon. All of those links are in the description box down below. As always, I'm likely to cover spoilers, so feel free to get caught up on the lore first and then come back to this. For everyone else, I'm going to talk specifically about the Norse god Lothar today, because I definitely did not provide enough information on him in the video linked here, and I assumed the name alone would be enough. However, this led to many people having many questions about Lothar, to the point that I need to talk more about him. He's one of those gods that isn't talked about very much in the Eddas, the primary source material for Norse mythology. Let me start by saying Arith Harger and Jackson Crawford each specifically talk about Norse topics on their respective YouTube channels, and they are excellent sources to use. I've linked those channels in the description, so make sure to check those out if you want to know more about Norse mythology, lifestyles, beliefs, each rune, and so much more. Lothar was part of the triad that created mortal life. It was him, Odin, and Honir. The details on the creation myth vary by different sources, but the three of them came upon two trees, Asker and Embla, Ash and Elder. Together, the three gods breathed life into them. Odin gave them breath and spirit, Honir gave them senses, and Lothar gave them blood and flesh. This transformed Asker and Embla into the first mortals, and that's really all we know about Lothar the Norse god. It's an easy parallel to draw that we know equally little about Luke's sword, but there is a scene in Kingdom Hearts 3 that I personally haven't discussed yet, and perhaps this is where we find the answer to the wild card seen here. What's this? A wild card. You've earned it. Hang on to it. <sighs> Could turn the tables. If the somebody of Luke's sword is, in fact, a character based on the god Lothar, perhaps that card is the waypoint Sora needs to maintain his body when he gets sent to Quadratum slash Unreality. In the most recent update of Union Cross, the Master of Masters specifically said that that was the role of the Book of Prophecies. Being a waypoint, his eye being the medium, and Lushu holding the memories, he will be able to regain his physical body when he returns. Perhaps the wild card is the waypoint for Sora to do the same in Quadratum. As a different realm, Unreality has nowhere for Sora to connect to, so his heart would just be lost. Perhaps the card is imbued with extra magic to connect Unreality with Kingdom Hearts reality, so Sora can appear in the world Quadratum with a physical body. That's long-winded and complicated, but that's also Kingdom Hearts for you. At this point, I need to ground us just a little bit, and remember this is Kingdom Hearts, not Norse mythology. I do not believe Nomura is writing the stories verbatim, but rather drawing inspiration from them. It's a lot easier to do the world building required for this series if you pull from something obscure that not many people know a lot about. This is exactly what I do for my D&D campaigns, so I'm going to keep assuming that's what he's doing until some of these character arcs get resolved. We really don't know how far he's going to go with any of these stories until any of them come to a conclusion. Hopefully, that will come with Scald at the end of Union Cross, so we can apply it to everyone else, but only time will tell. So let's assume that Luke's sword is the nobody of a character named Loder with the second R dropped for name pattern reasons. What does that mean? Well, firstly, he's from the same generation as Master Odin in Dark Road, and therefore there is a Honir waiting to be discovered. This tells me there will be another side game after Dark Road to investigate that group of Keyblade Masters. It also means the three of them likely had their own set of students, likely similar to the Dandelions. Those students would have ventured off to generate more Keyblade wielders wherever they landed, and would be the earliest mortals we have encountered thus far. So to simplify this, here is my new theory for the origin story of Luke Sword, assuming his somebody is based on the Norse god Lothar. I could see Master Odin, Master Lodor, Master Honir being members of the original Keyblade War. Perhaps they took the Keyblade and broke it into 20 pieces and forged the first Keyblades from it and sent them to the children with the purest hearts, either pure light or pure darkness, because there are Keyblades for each side. You know, balance and all that. 
While the Norse mythology story is about the creation of mortals, I believe Nomura is actually Christian and follows the Christian myth more than a pagan one. The Master of Masters could still be Loki in this scenario, as he is the same generation as Odin. Or he may be a Judeo-Christian figure like Jesus or Lucifer, but I don't believe he's Honir or any other entity involved in the creation of man slash earth. I believe the Master of Masters' true role is that of a martyr, not a creator, though this may shoot my other theory in the foot of Lothar being one of the seven missing students, but that's theory crafting. We have to stay flexible and humble about these things. Perhaps he's not one of the seven missing students, but will be introduced in a different game later. But what do you think? Could Luke Sword Somebody be based on the Norse god Lothar? How do you think the Norse myth will play out in the Kingdom Hearts series? Tell me all about your thoughts in the comments section down below. Also, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and all of the other things I'm supposed to ask you to do. Also, can be found in the description box down below. Until next time!